if my box ever smelled like the Jersey Turnpike, somebody just kill me because that right there is beyond a problem that you can't that you can't solve that. Dumpster Any, juice. Although there was yeah, a girl one City. time. Sorry, Anything what? oceanic next to New York City is foul. But the Jersey Turnpike is a different smell. Yo, you smell a shorty with a box like that. Yo, you just got to run. Head for the hills. Your face. Nah. Burn the clothes that you got outside. Yo, if you got to take a charge for indecent exposure, do so. Because that's going to be fucking going to flip the AIDS. You got to get, get, get a whole new car. It's your boy. Mike Powers, Intro King, a.k.a. Voice of Fucking Hip Hop, is in the building. That's Big French the Pragmatic right there. You know what I mean? That's DJ Beans. Yes. Hello. And for the first time on Reloaded, special guest co-host, producer extraordinaire, <laughs> Wavy the God, is in the building. <laughs> Wavy. 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 Listen, man, thank you for showing up. I appreciate it. No problem, man. We've been talking about this for a long time. Last time I saw you, it was on a stupid in Brooklyn. French was there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, French was with me. He got me out there. Um, Kay Burns was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Kane also. Eddie Kane. Eddie Kane, who was about, looks like he's about to go on a crazy run. I feel some energy from Eddie Kane right now. Right? I just, it feels like that when I look at the IG post. You. That feels like Eddie Kane is about to fuck. He's, he's been dope. So it's his turn. Yo. And then Wavy, you you did what was your last project that you were what was the is it Garden of Eden? I'm sorry. God God's Eden. God's Eden. Okay. Incredible project. I saw the video you in Rome Street. Creative hustling. I had to make a way was copping and flipping on Alpha Bay selling Ravers onions. Residue all over the scale that I used to weigh the substance. My favorite cousin spray percussion at your waves for front. It sound like Quest Love drumming. I've been running this rap shit. They fraudulent. Most of these niggas catfish. They crew just characters in the cast that they act with. Listen, incredible. And then all was out of nowhere. You said I'm doing some acting, and you was on some show. What was the show you was on? It's a uh, it's on the Discovery Channel Plus. So um, Billy buys Brooklyn. Billy, uh, and it's on Discovery Channel Plus. You said, yeah. Okay. That's so it, fire! Congrats on that because I'm just gonna say real quick. Me and Wavy about two years ago we discussed how important TV and movie placements are, and this motherfucker is up in that shit physically. Shout out to Rim, by the way. Just since I got the open lane, shout out to Rim. Rim is the one that lined that up. He's just like, yo, I need a producer to, you know, they need a producer to do this shit, man. Like, I don't know how he got that, but he, he lined me up and went there and I just did that shit. You don't know how he lined it up? That's Rimzel Washington. What? <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. That's, that is a fact. Him and that Nems need their own show. Shout to Nems, shout to Rim. But you were wearing a disguise, it looked like to me. Am I, do I got this right? I, it wasn't even a disguise on that show, man. Like, let me tell you like this. That, what you saw, was pandemic face waving because we had no barbershops, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was like, if you look at the um, Rome, Rome Street's video, The Ugliest, that song that we got together, The Ugliest. Yeah, dope song. Now, he had the chops, all of that. There's around, we did all that shit around. All that shit was going on during the pandemic. I felt like a lot of people capitalized during the back on um, the, the beginning of the pandemic when everybody was like at a standstill, you know, me and the brothers was moving. Well, listen, a brother like me, I didn't, I don't need a barber. I tried to tell y'all a long time ago about this right here, but if your head ain't smooth and round like this, you can't pull it off. You know what I mean? Like French, that big rock head ass nigga right there, he could, he could. <laughs> nigga, big hey, ass, man. Barney Rubble head ass nigga. Look, he's mad, look hey. he's, just mad, he's just mad. I look younger than him. <laughs> oh, oh, same age. Do you? Do you really? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, don't. You like you could be my uncle, nigga. Fuck out of here. I am your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> uncle Mike, I'm, Mike. I told y'all a little bit of asshole was gonna start coming out on this show, so I'm just trying. Wait, I'm, you said your asshole was coming out? Yikes! Oh, hemorrhoid. Nah, that's a real problem. Don't, don't, I'm not, we're not going to get into that. Hey, take it listen, y'all see where we just jump it. in and say, he just threw a random hemorrhoid in there. Y'all heard that? That was, that was, heard that. yeah, it's all right. He's so, trying to tell you get some preparation age in your I life. was, I was going to tell him he about to go into the blender, but he already know what's up. Apparently he ready. So let's get to the um first story real quick. Wait, 
Bad news. My computer's <laughs> Wait, you could have just said it out loud if you were gonna read it. Fred <laughs> just sent a message to the chat that his that he about to lose his charge. What? We about to lose Deuce and French? Listen. Yeah. You ain't where you Yo, go at. get your fucking charger then. We'll no, the your... charger just shorted out just now. I heard a pop, and I'm like, what the fuck was that? So the first story, Beans, you got notes? Because I know French ain't got them. Mm-mm. How you okay. know what the fuck I got, nigga? Show me some notes. <laughs> I can't turn. I got to share the screen. My, my notes is in the email you sent, nigga. Oh, okay. Oh, you wait a minute. I didn't get an email. Yes, you uh-huh. did. I got an email. I only know what we had prior discussed. I didn't get an email. Okay, well, you you going to the blender then too? Here we go. A man. This I just I seen this on World Star. I ain't did no. <laughs> I haven't done no research this week. I seen this on World Star. A man steals four hundred thousand dollars from his job. Did we anybody see this? Nearly four hundred thousand dollars stolen from this Tempe Home Depot, and we're told the employee accused of taking it replaced some of the bills with fake money he bought on Amazon. So if you don't know about this story, right? So this guy would take money out the cash register, right? Um, and it ended up being up to 400. I don't know how long it took him to get to 400,000. No, hold on, hold on. You, you're missing the whole. No, I'm not. I'm about to get to that part. Okay. I definitely the, didn't get an email, by the way. Okay. The, 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 the clincher on this thing is he was replacing the bills. This is what you talk about, right, French? He replacing the bills in the register with fake money he bought from Amazon. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Usher Bucks. It's... <laughs> you feel me? I thought he was going to say, don't, please don't tell me you put Usher Raymond in that cash register. Oh, oh my God. So Amazon, fake. you could buy fake money on Amazon? Yo, you know the money that be, niggas be having in their videos? Yeah, make it look all spicy. I've seen it. Yeah, <laughs> it's the fake money for the video. Listen, a pack of hundred. From from Amazon probably cost you about thirty bucks. You look at about ten thousand dollars in fake money. That is so fucking ass backwards to spend money on fake money. Like no. bro. Listen, ninety percent of the videos you see where niggas is making it rain. I mean, I know is that shit. I also know jewelry's rented cars. I I know about all this shit. Come on, we all in this industry. But how about this though? How about you spent money to buy money? To buy fake money. Fake money, though. You're not like it's not like you invest in it. But crypto. wait a minute. But well, then basically, you get, what you bought was a visual prop. But then you get arrested, and in order to fight that case, you got to spend real money. I would have went to a small town with that fake money, to the the most dingiest strip club, and cleaned that money up. What kind of case is that? That's a fed case, right? Where, 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 where uh, that yeah, been? that's a fed. That's case. several fed cases. And how much did you say? Uh, Forty thousand. Four hundred. <laughs> Four hundred thousand. That's 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 a hundred. So what's years considered grand said. larceny? Anything over five thousand dollars is grand larceny. And you know, loss prevention let that shit build up. So they. <laughs> so now you said four hundred thousand. Divide that by five thousand. Oh my god! He going to jail now. He ain't ne- we ain't going to never see <laughs> he ain't this coming nigga. out. He ain't never coming home. Because um, they're gonna give him. They're gonna give him separate charges for a lot of that shit. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna get. A, he's gonna get a lot. And then Home Depot is gonna press charges on top of it. So look, listen. Right. So you, so you basically, Homie, at done, the end of the son. day, you stole four hundred grand from Home Depot. You done? Be That's what it boils down. I don't know why motherfuckers think they can get up. Like real shit. I, I keep on the Tinder swindler is a fucking legend because this motherfucker's still out there doing it. But yo, this type of shit though, when it comes to this, like motherfuckers are just so stupid. They're just so stupid. Listen, it's too easy to catch shit like that. This motherfucker out there, he a genius. He just manipulating females to fucking give him money to give other bitches money. Like the dude is a genius. His, his, He's his, still his, out there doing it. His scam was crazy. Amazing. Tinder Swindler scam was crazy. But this shit, yo, like this type of shit, like, and especially it's a major corporation. You know what I'm saying? That's like, you're going to go to Target, you're going to go to fucking Walmart and scam up in their registers as if, Everything isn't digitalized, and they don't know exactly who was on this register at this time. The motherfucking managers are trained to be counting out the money nah, and accounting listen, for everything. Bro. So when that deposit is happening, all they have to do is go back to that day's deposit, and boom, bam. You it's, 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 it's simpler. It's even simpler than that, right? Because watch this. You you're not thinking ahead at all. You think Daquan after you do that interview and they hire you, Daquan, and they put you on the register, Daquan. 
that they trust you, Daquan? Nigga, they watching you Off the whole time. It, you got the, your name is Daquan and you got the job. You already fucking won. Because a lot of Daquans don't even so get that the would job. Mean you on camera taking money out, putting it in, putting it in your pocket. You already suspect immediately. <laughs> the next topic, the dip set help make the lyrical resurgence possible now i could talk about this now because the video is going to come out and then this video will come out after this but i met hell rel in syracuse shout to hell rel you know what i mean a legendary moment and we sat down and we had to talk about it i was a big dipset fan i told hell rel the story about how my son when he was like what 13 or 14 um i bought him the air force ones and had my man uh hook him up with the art the dipset artwork big ass eagle right on the top of that air force one you know what i mean that's how the movement was so strong back then right and so when i talked to rel i asked him because it occurred to me while i'm sitting there talking to him it was a time when it was like it was only kind of dipset keeping the east coast alive you could say g unit too which he brought in g unit but for me i felt like the east coast shit the real shit the real street shit it was dying away because even Hot 97 was playing down south, snap music. You drive through New York, you wasn't hearing no East Coast, right? But when the dips came, it was like our savior. Like, thank God. The sound was so different, right? The vibe was crazy. They had lyricists in that in that crew, right? And then the style choices, right? Just the way they hold the whole movement. So we talked to, and I thought, now we're at the resurgence, the lyrical resurgence, right? And we had that big gap. Is Dipset responsible for keeping that shit on life support long enough for us to get to that point. How important was Dipset to where we are right now? Wavy shaking his head, I'll give you the floor. Nah, man, cause there was like, there was still underground acts that was still popular even between those times, between that interval time. You know, they had, you know, they had guys like Papoose that was coming out of the resurgence like around that time. You know what I'm saying? Papoose was popping from around when Dipset- Alphabetical like, Slaughter? Mm hmm. And, oh, and, and, library. And Dipset, Dipset was still catering to the South. Because remember, they, 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 was, they did that song with Master P. And they was trying to cater to the South because they was trying to transition for that, you know, for what was going on. It's like they seen what was going to happen. It was like, oh, we got to get down or lay down, you know? But I got to push back. I got to push back just because, okay, Papoose has always been fire, but where I, I'm, sit, I'm sitting in Cleveland, right? So, and if you're sitting in Des Moines, Iowa, or you're sitting in uh, Kansas City or St. Louis, maybe Papoose didn't have that fuller impact. Dipset was a brolic ass movement. Yeah, you, I agree. Brolic. So, but you were you were finding them on the same mixtape. So the chances are, if you were listening to Dipset at that time. You knew who Papoose was. No, nah, but when you turned on BET, you were seeing all the Dipset and MTV. Yeah. Okay, you were seeing so the yeah, Dipset yeah, videos. Video. So now, if you're right. a kid that don't, if you if you 12, 13 years old and you don't have a reference point because you don't know who Rock Kim is, you know what I mean, or you might not be have been hip to Mob Deep, and then you getting caught up in all the the down south stuff. All of a sudden, you turn on MTV, you say uh, Dipset the best out, Hell Rail, he fresh out. That appeals to you as a 13 year old white kid somewhere in Utah. That's your entry point into like kind of lyrical hip hop. They might not know who Papoose is. Some of them, the the Dipset movement was so big, it just and this you can say the same thing about G Unit. G Unit was just like bro, so. Hold on, hold on one second, bro. Yes, talk to me, French. You consider Dipset lyrical? No, I think Jr. Ryder, I, I Hell Rel. Joel Santana and I bought the Joel Santana album with the game's been missing and it's nothing but bars on that joint. Still play that shit. But but it's like when you say dipset, what's the first person you think of? Cam. And then Jim Jones. Jim. But look, Diplomatic Immunity came out in 2003, though. You feel me? So, look, we were already familiar with the locks who made, like, the coke rap and all that shit was yeah, already man. introduced. They were running the mixtape. The mixtapes was heavy around that time, too, exactly. man. And then, and then Dip, Dip said, Dip said the locks, Pat Poose, um, I learned about Ransom. Ransom. Around, they they like, were all in this mixtape era. So, like, I wouldn't even say it's a lyrical thing, but they were having more of the street anthems. It, you know well, what I'm it, saying? You call it lyrical or not, right? It's 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 the East Coast. And I lived in. This is coming from a Florida boy now. I was in Florida, indulging in this shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. heavy into Max B, heavy into like the A team when it was popping. Like um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Stack bundles. Yeah, I was about to say him. Stack bundles. Yeah. Shout out to that's a piece of that motherfucker. That motherfucker was nasty. Yeah. Yeah. You know? They didn't have the big platform. They didn't get to blossom the way they were supposed to blossom. Lord have mercy. Um, Prince, did you get you? You're a little bit dark right now, but that's. Are you frozen? Is he frozen or no? No, you already. Wow! You have Wavy. Here's another. Here's another thing. So on every show, you're gonna notice. Um, everybody comments because they think French is frozen. So until he laughs or something, he like and he wears glasses so you can't see him blink. So there's no signs of life. So this is a big thing. So if you uh, don't don't focus on Frenchie ever because you might be like, damn, is this motherfucker all right? French, we were just about to get to talk about Ti, who said uh, black people don't really care about white people using the N word, right? So let me let me give the context because we was talking about this. So let me give context. He was, he was been getting interviewed by comedian Donnell Rawlins, right? That's Ashley Larry, am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, niggas, he said, niggas don't really care for real. Um, I ain't going to lie to you. You can call the community of black people niggas as long as you send them a check. He said, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers will sell. They'll sell a little bit of their ego, a little bit for sale. They might not want, want to do it in front of everybody, but nobody really give a fuck like that for real. Maybe he's speaking for himself. Yeah, I mean, but he, but he referred to no. He be having no, some problem. He got some problematic quotes where it's like you know because he use he like to use a lot of big words and I want to give him the benefit of the doubt of being an intelligent guy. He is I, intelligent. That's why. This right. So when he says stuff like that, like I, I get it. If there are people that will sell out that don't have a problem with it, I get yeah. that. But I but. Agree. But for a lot of us, like when we hear somebody saying nigger, 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 like it's a problem. Listen, how about this? This is real, this is real simple. If it didn't matter to niggas, that nigga wouldn't have beat the shit up that white boy in Applebee's. You shitting me? Wow. <laughs> First thing that came to mind. Oh, wow. they don't somebody needs to line that up next to oh, each man. other. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, and put TI's quote. And then just take the pot of dudes saying it and getting knocked the fuck out, put it side by side. Yeah, no, oh, nobody God. cares. Like I have, I would have a problem with it. I'm biracial, and I would have, you know, like, you know, like that. That kind of like tweaks me out because it's like, of course, any any real motherfucker would sit there and be like, nah, I can't sell myself out like that, like, not for no bread. And like, and you have to have some type of dignity and some pride. Thing I mean, what is he saying? Like, can, like. Like, you know, he, is he saying, like, we don't care if they say it in general or, like... Yeah, what does he mean by, send, by me sending the money? Giving me a check. Nah, I care about that shit. That ain't gonna go down. Hey, you can bad. send me a check after you say it for disrespecting no, no. me, not me, but you know what I'm saying? Right. Let me tell you, let me tell you what just happened, Mike Powers. Big I, just, I just learned recently that um, Elon Musk is a racist. I, I, and I haven't, I haven't got a chance to read the story because I was working, but I saw the headline. So tell me about this. What happened? Um, apparently, for years, any like any black or brown people who work for like uh, Tesla, SpaceX, they get treated like less than human. You know what I'm saying? And I had no idea. Now, me being who I am, I, I have no real power to do anything. It pisses me off because I was kind of like I was kind of like like in cool with the idea of Elon Musk and what he was doing with Tesla and SpaceX and shit like that. But I'm like, nah, you ain't gonna be doing that to my people. So I, so last night I sold all every piece of Tesla stock I had. Oh, I saw that on your IG. You said that on I IG. Did, yeah. yeah, I was about to say you have the power to do something because that first of all, and you speaking on it. So the power yeah, that you have to bring you know that awareness to people. Bring right. it, you just brought it to you my life. I didn't know. And, 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 and I can't, I gotta keep it a hundred. Tesla stock pays well. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Mm. But not at not not at the cost of my people though. Thank you. So exactly what TI just said, people will do. Nah, Frenchie just did the exact opposite. Opposite. If, if, yeah. if they're not saying it directly, but they treating you a certain kind of way, fuck that shit. We don't like, support like, that you, shit. We, you, we, we don't that support article, that. Like, you're reading the article, y'all. Like, he had the the black people on their hands and knees to mop the floor, while the white the white 
people who were like the uh, uh, custodians could walk on walk walk like a man and walk like a woman. And it's amazing what these progressive fucks. Because when you look at um, a company like Tesla, which seems to be forward leaning and forward thinking, because of the energy efficient, you think that it's a bunch of nice hippies that work in there and all this other kind of stuff. When it's really like you, I challenge white folks. Like now, don't get me wrong, I challenge black folk too. But when you call yourself an ally when you're white, I gotta challenge you. I ask certain questions. What you think about January six? You know what I mean, what do you think about George Floyd? You know what I mean? I had a couple of white friends that tell me, why well, are these black people looting? They tearing up Target. They don't care about George Floyd, motherfucker. Blocked. 20 year friendship. You out of my life. That's not what the point is. Why are you focusing on that part when this man lost his life? If that's the conversation you want to have with me as a white person that's supposed to be my homie for 20 fucking years, the first thing you say to me about George Floyd is why are these people tearing up uh, Target? But you ain't said shit to me about this man that got tortured on camera. We're not friends, my nigga. Right. So I, I, I'm, I'm challenging folks up front now because I don't got 20 years to spend with you just to find out that you are undercover racist. You know what I mean? So, yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention, French, out in this dude. And the, the power that I do have, which is the power of speech, I'm going to use it right now when I say fuck Elon Musk. And we got to move on. I got this story here. I don't need to add too much context to it. French, I don't know if y'all got this or not, but it's a is a toilet that can read your anal print. No, 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 no. Yeah, well, I no, don't know no. about anal print, but what it does... No, I read the story. I went deep into the story, pause. I mean... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Next topic. Every, every... No, this will... We, you I hope, don't want to If you have a child in the room... If you have a child in the room, listen, we got to... No, it's not even that. It's like, it's like what is that, though, man? It's like, why? Okay, so it's like, it's biometrics. So, like, face scans, fingerprint... This because this, with this toilet, I think so. It won't food. allow you to shit in it if it's not your anal cord yeah, that you fucking printed. Lock the gates on you, brown baby, and you shit all over the fucking. Please, place. please oh. spread your cheeks to unlock this toilet. If it's not toilet. your balloon hole, you can't fucking. And what if your ass, not your ass, but a female's asshole got pon pounded the night before, and now it's not the same size. <laughs> you did <didn't> buy... <laughs> Your butthole don't have retract. And to use the, the the jets and shit, you know they have the European the jets bidets, to wash your ass. I, yo, <laughs> the bidet. Who was I talking to? Yeah, the bidet. You have to go you know, uh, toilet toilet like they have YouTube Red or some shit, but you but you got to like pay for a subscription to use the next features of the toilet. That's mm -hmm. wild. Yo, listen. And what if it malfunctioned? What the fuck is the point of it? An anal print? Who the fuck figured out that there's a print in an anus like a finger, uh, like a like a I'm yes, that's print. the whole point. Everybody. Oh, wait, you know what? Nah, hold up. Hmm. Because you know they be taking like actual prints of porn stars, like their pussies, the, yeah. the balls, all that, right? So you got to think <laughs> somebody's got an anal print. Somebody had to have spread their shit and put it in that cement so they have a, a pocket booty, like a, a pocket pussy. There's got to be a fucking pocket. Oh, I mean, cord. The, the, it's, they got the whole booty print and the... <laughs> nah, it's man. true though. They got the whole mold. You can go to a store to and buy you a whole booty. Kind of wait, stuff. wait, wait. This this is going way off. I why know. Does, why does the anal print? What, 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 why do it have this for the toilet? What, what, the what, anal yeah. print is biometrics because I think they want to. They want. They want to help you be able to diagnose problems and get in front of diseases at home. So I guess you can. It can read your anal print. And, may, and then you can send your results off to your doctor, or maybe you just push send on the toilet. I don't know. You know what I mean, something has to go up there. You can't tell just so from a, a hole like an internal problem. Then they're gonna know. But listen. but 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 listen, the the way the cameras and everything work is reading your whole anal print like a but fingerprint. But it gotta go in there. You can't. Oh, your oh, anal oh, print. Five weeks to live. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Shitty you ass. Anal print, Mike. It's more than just. A fucking anal print. Like, right, there's more to it because a prostate exam, if you're going to get something it, in there. It's literally scanning your feces on the way out. Like, a, like, 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 like a stool sample, technically. That makes more sense. And, and it's, it's, reading, it's reading the volume of it, the color of it. The you know all the all the whatever data they need to the, 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 the scope the Scoville <laughs> units <laughs> like I'm at my a hey, my boo boo with my, my boo boo is at sixteen thousand Scoville units. Well, listen, bro, I don't know the terms. Listen, bro, you know that's, a, that, that's how they measure hotness on the wings, right? This is what I read. You know what I'm saying? But 
it uh, it's technically like it'll let you know if you're like on the way to getting like prostate cancer, shit like that, or hemorrhoids or whatever, and what you can do to prevent it or whatever. I guess they, they send you back the data because it's, it's already hooked up to, to your internet in the house, your Wi-Fi. It's, the toilet's on Wi-Fi. <laughs> Yo, what if they hack your toilet? <laughs> that was just my thought. So now you can steal identities from people's fecal matter or <laughs> anal print. Yo. If you live in Australia, you might have a snake come up and bite you in the fucking asshole. Like I've heard about, you ever heard about that? Where, some, where you taking a dump and like an animal is, comes up out of a snake? I always check the toilet for, for things. That almost happened to me. It. Wait, what happened, Wavy? Talk to us. Nah, but when I used to live in Oklahoma, when I used to live on that farm, man, like I had a situation, man, where, you know, I was far away from the house. I had to take a shit in the, in, in the barn shitter and... There was a snake coiled up in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was some real nigga shit, man. I'm telling you. I Did bet you hold it next time. I bet you hold it next time. Pull it for you. Nah, Did man, he I assist just... in your movement. No, nah, man. I just. I hey, just listen. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you still got two and a half pounds of boo boo left, right, to come out, and you got half of a turd hanging out, right, and then you hear that rattle. <laughs> I'm gonna sit there and let that shit touch cotton. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like if I got a turtle, if I got a turtle head, a tortoise head worth of shit about to drop out, <laughs> and there's a snake, and there's a snake there, man. I'm, I'm not fucking with it. That means, ho, you got shitted on. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike?